Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. As you guys can see, today we have the Season 1 Reloaded Update live in MW2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. This brings new content and a ton of patch notes, bug fixes, weapon changes, gameplay updates, all sorts of stuff like that. So we're starting here first with Raven's patch notes here, primarily dedicated towards Warzone 2 and DMZ. We'll also go over the multiplayer stuff here as it appears. So first up here for December 16th, we do have the new Warzone Cup LTM going on. This is basically Rocket League in Call of Duty. So you can jump into like the custom field map here and actually play that. Uh, it is a limited time mode, so it's only gonna be live until the 23rd. Now for general updates, we got some solid ones here. The XP tokens menu has changed to display how much time is left on your xp tokens in the lobby screen at long last we have an xp token countdown timer big w there xp tokens can now be equipped in the pause menu while in game big w there xp tokens can no longer be accidentally activated during double xp events so you can't stack anything there players who join a game in progress will no longer get a loss if their team loses the match uh, attachments now have a tuning icon on them and in preview indicating which ones can be tuned and which ones cannot Finishing moves now count towards the 30 kill streak in the daily challenge in Spec Ops. Uh, sticker book challenges in the after action report screen now say calling card challenge instead. Operator bios are no longer cut off. Acquiring a new blueprint will now display a pulsing dot next to the associated weapon and gunsmith, so it's a bit easier to find those. Players will no longer see a black screen on some platforms when trying to purchase COD points. And various issues with weapon and attachment unlocks and progression have been addressed, including stats displays. So, if I had to guess, we might see some weapons with some increased levels to unlock some new attachments there. So we'll have to keep our eyes out there. Uh, on the social tab here, and I can go ahead and zoom in on the patch notes a bit. Uh, they merged the hub and friends tab together. They switched the smaller, uh, they switched two smaller player card widgets for friends, added support for uh, batch and bulk sending a friend request for whatever reason. Fixed various bug issues impacting uh, the invite feature. Then they transitioned the grid view and scrolling on the friends list. For showcases, camera positions on operators have been adjusted for better positioning. They uh, added adjustments to filler and sort. Fixed an issue with the players browsing it, basically. Fixed an issue with the calling cards not showing up. Fixed an issue where players weren't properly sorting by progression. And then also hides the empty attachment nodes on the weapon inspection as well. Uh, for channels, adjusted the member list states. So muted, talking, etc. Adjusted text message states in game channels. Players in the member list will now be divided by team in lobbies. Fixed an issue where players, uh, player lobbies were still able to be heard when connected to a custom channel. And then they also added the ability to text chat with the group members. And the group is like a huge 5,000 person group you can create for, you know, communities and stuff like that. For the weapons, we obviously have the brand new Chimera rifle and they still don't give us the information on the weapon challenge. And hopefully the store bundle is going to be live by the time the updates out, which is likely when you guys are seeing this video uh, for weapon adjustments here. So weapon tuning, this is big. The general tuning, Akimbo P890 X12 Basilisk and 50GS have received a damage reduction against armored opponents, fixed an issue causing shotguns to inconsistently display the broken hit marker. So basically Akimbo pistols outside of the X13, curiously enough, all got a severe nerf. That should be pretty good for Warzone with the Akimbo P890s, which were very, very strong. For rifles, they fixed an issue with the M13B. On the Castov 545 rifle, they increased the muzzle velocity, uh, decreased the hip spread, increased the close damage, which is solid, and then also increased the uh, chest damage multiplier. So some solid buffs to the Castov 545. On the SMGs, the Castov 74U is not an SMG. It is a rifle, but they reduced the close range damage. Three hits to kill requires at least one chest hit. So the Castov 74U close range is no longer as good as it was before. The MX-9, they increase the movement speed, ADS speed, and sprint to fire speed on the 32 round magazine, so that'll be a bit more aggressive. On the Vel 46, they reduce the hip spread, so it'll be a bit accurate. They increase the movement and increase the far damage, so gonna be a little bit more lethal there. Slight buffs to the MP7. For the Basilisk, blocking Basilisk compensators and flash hider on the FTAC arrow barrel now. They also added a muzzle attachment usage on the FTAC arrow barrel. Arrow, arrow barrel. That's not easy to say. Uh, the Lockshot KT-85, the Leveler, and then also the Cronin Dark on there as well. Uh, for the 50GS, they reduced the hip spread. They increased the one-hit headshot range. They increased the damage range, the neck and upper shoulder location damage multipliers, the bullet velocity, and then also the damage range on the long shot barrel. For shotguns here, shotguns can no longer kill fully armored players in one shot. So no one shot shotguns 
whatsoever, which is pretty important for Warzone. On the Expedite, they added the Guard category now for additional attachments. Uh, for melees, on the Riot Shield, they reduced the movement speed, reduced the melee damage to three hit kill. The uh, Shield animation it was improved, and then also longer switch time pulling out Throwing Knife when the Riot Shield is equipped, so you won't be able to Throwing Knife with your shield as easily. For launchers on the Joker, missiles no longer land out of bounds when targeting a wall on the edge of the map, and then also they improved the thermal readability when aiming in. For vehicles, there were a lot of vehicle balancing adjustments here, curiously enough. Reduced collision damage taken by the heavy chopper, especially from landing. Uh, increased health and damage resistance on the UTV. Increased the fall damage to the ATV and the UTV. Added custom turret rotation speed for anything with turrets on it. Increased the damage done by AI to both LTV versions. Reduced the distance that boats can be piloted when completely out of the water, so you won't be able to go as far on land anymore. Adjusted vehicle exit limits to increase the chance of not uh, exiting on steep slopes. Players no longer get the out of bounds countdown when taking a vehicle from an enemy's restricted area in ground war. Fix an issue where the player would continue to uh, see the countdown if they go into a vehicle just outside the zone. For other changes, friendly player visibility, uh, friendly player nameplates disappear when an enemy is in the direct path of an ally. So that's actually a really solid update. You won't see your teammate's nameplate where you think it might be an enemy and you start shooting at them or the enemy looks like a teammate. So that's really solid. In tier one mode, this change only applies behind geo allies within the line of sight will always show nameplates to prevent friendly fire. Uh, for kill streaks, players that have been killed in one life modes with revive capabilities such as knockout will no longer be marked. Care package, they fixed an issue that allowed players to spawn in a position when the care package is occupying it. The MGB, they fixed an issue that prevented you from calling it in underwater. On the Juggernaut, it should now correctly switch between the minigun and pistol. Uh, explosive weapons that stick to the Juggernaut should now inflict more damage. And they fixed an issue where the Juggernaut sometimes died to a single throwing knife in Tier 1. On the SAE, they fixed an issue that prevented explosions from doing damage. And on the Sentry, they fixed an exploit that allowed the Sentry to be placed under the map. For field upgrades, uh, the portable radar can now stick to vehicles, so that's pretty solid for running around having like a mini UAV, if you will. The radiation blocker now prevents the use of equipment, so you don't get any issues with that anymore, blocking your ability to interact. Uh, then also on thermites, those no longer persist on a player that was stuck and then died and then respawned again, so you're just in a perpetual burn state. Uh, for attachments, tuning. Most beneficial tuning value magnitudes have been increased, and some harmful tuning magnitudes have been decreased, so they'll hurt your guns a little bit less. That's solid as well. For optics, thermal optics increase the range for target identification and heat signatures fade when they're killed on the prime 90 improve the quality of the thermal image on the angel 40 fix the range finder to fit in the 50 gs on the hollow turn they increase the contrast and then on the optic uh thermo optic x9 they increase the contrast as well for bug fixes here just a couple of things initially they fix an issue causing the game client to freeze with uh within the battle pass they fix an issue causing the reward uh previews to not appear as intended in the battle pass uh an audio cutoff when skidding and then also uh, attacking with fists, causing players to lean out of vehicles. There's more bug fixes coming up. Just keep that in mind. By the way, if you guys are new to the channel, around 58% of viewers watching are not already subscribed. Every day, I got you covered with everything going on in COD. News, updates, loadouts, class setups, tips, it's all right here. So feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. We are less than 1,500 subs away from 900,000. So it would be absolutely insane if we could hit that goal here soon. Really do appreciate all the support and all the new subs as of late. Also, if you guys enjoy this video, let me know by dropping a like on it as well. Let's try and aim for 3,000 likes on this one. For audio, they fixed the Dolby Atmos issue. Then also audio collision remains disabled in multiplayer as they investigate an issue impacting some players. Now, there is going to be a Warzone 2 playlist update on the 16th for solos, duos, and quads for standard gameplay. Then Mini Royale Trios is going to happen with 54 players in there. Third person trios is also coming back with 150. Then there's going to be the Warzone Cup trios as well. And then DMZ trios is going to be the standard here too. Now for the map, they included some lighting and shadow improvements for major points of interest on Almazra. So that's pretty solid. In DMZ, we have Building 21. Mysterious new keys have arrived in Almazra, but where do they lead? Limited intel on access to the biological laboratory known as Building 21 will take players outside of Almazra and into a hyper dangerous new area of DMZ. So this isn't on the Warzone 2 map or Almazra map. I'm kind of confused by that. For gameplay for Battle Royale adjustments, they've increased the number of strongholds to five up from three. Also, AI combatants, some big nerfs to the bots here. The damage per bullet was reduced. The number of units per site was reduced and further reductions are based on your squad sizes too. AI combatant reinforcements, they doubled the time between waves and the number of units per wave was reduced. So bots are gonna be easier in the strongholds now. Also in the black site, the AI now have additional armor and rewards of an upgraded version of the Stronghold UAV will sweep twice as far and about 30% faster. 
here as well. For DMZ adjustments on cash values, general changes to valuable items that are probably going to be more uh, valuable now, changes to cash rewards for contracts. Container spawn rates, they increase self revives, gas masks, and field upgrades. Uh, they increase plate carriers, backpacks, and field upgrades in the weapon stashes, decrease the electronic components in computer towers, decreased toothpaste in medical cabinets, and decreased the number of items found in the black markets. Plea for help. Eliminated players are now able to request help from enemy players, resulting them in joining the enemy team as a new member. That's very interesting. XP tokens can now be activated in the lobby menu. Random perks. Successfully extracting multiple times in a row will provide players with random perks for their next infill. That's kind of neat. Medium and large backpacks. These now allow for a third weapon slot. And then faction missions. They improve the descriptions. For equipment, the bomb drone players with three armor plates on the outer radius of an explosion will survive but receive critical damage to no more one shot downs of the bomb drone and the radiation blocker. They already covered that. For perks on the perk packages, the default loadouts have been updated. Nothing else has changed there. For quality of life, the out of bounds timer has been increased to 10 seconds. Players will have a sound when there is a revive now. Uh, when players drop a weapon, the ammo will also drop onto the ground. And if you pick it up, that ammo will also be picked up. For ground loot, they made improvements to ground loot priority so that interacting with desired items is easier. I love that. Buy station items uh, purchased will spread out rather than stack, so it's easier to interact with those. Then there's also a new sound in the gulag where you can uh, hear if an opponent or a uh, teammate has been eliminated so you know if it's gonna be one on two two on one so on and so forth combat record is delayed don't worry i'm gonna talk about this more in the ranty kind of video later on this week unfortunately and then we get to the big amount of bug fixes here which is uh very interesting fix various issues with uh player nameplates various collision issues on almazra same as always an issue that prevented players from hearing the bomb drone audio beeps an issue that caused the enemy marking your squad progress bar to not fill correctly. An issue that caused black widescreen bars to appear at the top and bottom of your screen. An issue that caused players and AI combatants to not render properly. An issue that prevented players from editing custom loadouts in the firing range. An issue that prevented players from pinging a loadout drop. That's a solid one there. An issue that caused players to redeploy further from their team after a jailbreak. An issue with weapons functioning incorrectly when dropped and picked up on the train. An issue with daily challenges. An issue that prevented players from interacting with the loot cache while crouched or prone. Owned, an issue that caused the circle closing countdown audio to not play an issue that caused a black site person of interest to follow players further from the black site than intended an issue that caused the bounty contract ui to remain on screen after a player was assimilated they fixed an issue that caused the resupply perk ui to not display its progress bar an issue that caused placeholder text on the player ids good grief there are so many bug fixes here which is a good thing to be fair an issue that fixed players to operate most vehicles leaning out of a window an issue that uh an issue with textures on various destroyed vehicles an issue that allowed players to use a finishing move on their own teammate after a gulag win friendly fire an issue that caused uh the screen to flash if a player attempted to return to the main menu during the victory phase an issue that caused the game client to freeze when players were interacting with buy stations an issue that prevented the diffuse option with the bombs in strongholds an issue that prevented eliminations from appearing in the kill feed which is another big one there an issue that prevented kill feed notifications when friendly players were downed an issue that prevented players using a keyboard and mouse pinging elements on the tack map an issue that wanted you to install the campaign while trying to queue for battle royale an issue that caused the incorrect match placement to appear on screen after players were eliminated an issue skipping the down state with a self revive pistol an issue that prevented players from interacting with the end of match options including spectate play again play again and leave an issue that resulted in contract failure when eliminating a black site person of interest an issue with weapon selections defaulting back to the m4 an issue with crashing in the playlist section of warzone 2 an issue with performance drop in the social menu an issue that caused placeholder images on the vehicle customization an audio issue with vehicles disappearing an issue where the screen would flicker during live matches an issue with maxing out cash while interacting with ground loot so that's the infinite cash glitch that's now fixed an issue with attack equipment not uh, rendering properly an issue that allowed players to avoid drowning by holding a self-revive pistol an issue that allowed players to loot multiple loadouts after completing a stronghold an issue that prevented atvs from taking fall damage a loadout issue that did not provide the correct equipment various issues that caused performance drops which is solid if you were spectating an issue that caused performance drops when you were eliminated in a smoke grenade an issue that caused contract phones to not render in an issue that prevented players from picking up contract phones on certain surfaces a visual corruption glitch with the vlk4 time scope we are still going by the way we have so many more to go through good grief an issue that prevented a squad's total cash 
uh, from updating after assimilating. An issue with the HUD uh, disappearing when you were doing a precision airstrike. So that's a solid fix as well. Issues with various elements across all Mazra. An issue that prevented players from picking up rewarded stronghold keys. An issue that caused the infill plane to spawn in in the middle of the field, causing players to receive out of bounds warnings. An issue that caused certain items to float in the air. An issue that prevented battle royale victories from counting towards mastery challenge progress. That's another big one right there. An issue that caused active players to incorrectly be removed from a match. An issue that allowed players to use melee attacks while swapping in the seat of a vehicle. An issue that caused the Champion's Quest HUD elements to disappear for the nuke uh, attempt there. An issue with parachutes and akimbo grip attachments. An issue that uh, caused correct information to appear on the spotter scope. An issue that prevented players uh, spectating from switching between player view and helmet view. An issue with the safe cracker contract looting. An issue that caused the jailer to stand up and not engage players. An issue that caused loadouts to drop in the gulag for whatever reason or the loadout icon to be in the gulag. An issue that caused a stronghold ping to not appear. An issue that caused the player's arm to be stuck after ledge hanging. An issue that caused player XP summary to overlap. An issue that caused supply boxes to drop the same loot after a restock event. An issue that caused the safe cracker contract to spawn inside of a stronghold. An issue that allowed players to enter vehicles while doing intel contracts. An issue that caused the champion quest bomb objective to spawn underground, which would be brutal. An issue that caused loot cards uh, to overlap. An issue that uh, affected the turret on the back of the armored patrol boat. Then also an issue with missing descriptions. Then we get to the DMZ issues. Thank goodness there's not as many here. My voice is dying. They fixed an issue in DMZ causing disconnect issues to appear in the kill feed. An issue that allowed eliminations and loot caches in DMZ to count towards battle royale challenges. An issue that caused some blueprints to not be usable in DMZ. An issue that caused lethal and tactical equipment to not count towards faction missions an issue where they use prompt did not correctly work for some missions an issue that caused the hunt squad contract to reward cash when the target x fills so you get free cash there an issue that caused sensitive documents to not be visible an issue that caused the caches in the secure nuclear material contract to spawn in locked areas an issue that caused the destroyed reinforcement helicopters to not track in the i think it's legion tier three Fix an issue with the weapons research mission, an issue where players were unable to view tier 3 missions for Legion and White Lotus and tier 4 for Black Mouse, an issue that caused killstreak elimination missions to not track when using a killstreak in any mode, an issue that caused submission progress to reset when you deselect it, an issue that caused the charges from destroy supplies to not do damage, an issue that prevented players from doing uh, destroy contraband weapons, and then also an issue that resulted in some key intel note pickups randomly going missing. So plenty of bug fixes there. Now we can switch over to Infinity Wards, which is largely the same, but has some additional information. So now on Infinity Wards side of things, we just have a few other additional details. There is a double XP weekend taking place from the 15th to the 19th. We also have uh, obviously shipment available in multiplayer also from december 21st to january 4th there's going to be the holiday shipment we obviously have raids going on here uh so that'll be available now with the adam grad raid we've got the warzone cup and then it's basically all the same uh different updates and changes that we saw on the warzone side of things here just you know with a different uh text basically they do confirm that the LA Thieves skin was in fact nerfed here, so it's going to be more red highlighted. Also, they adjusted the colors on the NYSL branding. PC specific issues, they fixed an FPS drop in the firing range, an issue that would make controllers vibrate when the game wasn't your main window, then also a night vision prompt in the HUD. In tier one, they fixed an issue where the minimap was not always appearing uh, when you would call in a UAV or an advanced, and then friendly AI will no longer set off suppression mines from the same team. For map updates here, they fixed a collision issue in Santa Senia, fixed various tactical camera exploits and a bullet collision exploit as well then in 6v6 various camera exploits uh issues with bullet penetration a few exploits where players could get into unintended areas then issues relating to lethal and tactical collision in certain environments and shoot houses now back in private matches there were also various spec ops changes here if you want to read through all these feel free to pause the video and everything else we have here is just the same changes we went through so that is effectively everything that ended up changing in the reloaded update so many bug fixes which is a fantastic thing i'm sure we'll still need more after this update but some solid changes with this update regardless that's gonna wrap things up for this video though if you guys enjoyed let me know by dropping a like on it if you're new here feel free to hit that sub button and once again thank you so much for tuning in but until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you guys later peace out